Changing minds one thought at a time. Greetings and welcome everyone to Mo- Motivate Social Podcast with Changing Minds Online. I am Dr. Akina Finch and my lovely co-host is Vanessa Canterbury. How are you doing today, Vanessa? I am great. How are you? I am great. I am so excited to bring on our guest tonight. I know this gentleman personally, and he is has the biggest heart in the world for people and, of course, for social media. And without further ado, I would love to bring on Ryan Bell. How are you today, Ryan? I'm good. Thanks for the really nice uh, intro. It's nice to be on the podcast. Um, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's do this. Yes, let's. Let's. I mean, I was introduced to you with Periscope Summit. And, of course, you branched off to now Summit Live and more great things especially in VR. So without further ado, can you tell the people how you're changing the world through social media? Oh, gosh, painfully, draggingly, uh, with, with, with a lot of work and a lot of good people like yourself that uh, believe in the power of getting folks together. I started out... Uh, a little over a year ago with the whole live streaming mentality, I was noticing that um, the culture in live streaming was naturally bringing people together. And so I thought that the next step would be bringing together with a uh, mentality of education and, and innovation. And so um, we put together a first event and it went very well and, uh, the events just got bigger and bigger and bigger, and now it's uh, it's changed into something that's just I, I I don't even know how to describe what we do anymore. When people ask me what I do now, I just kind of look at my wife, and she's like, "I've never been able to tell you," um, but it's it's been an interesting uh, thing that a lot of people have been involved in making happen and it's been wonderful to watch it grow. Wow. That is great, Brian. You know, I love the fact that you love building community because, you know, of course the point of being so of social media is of course to be social. And lately the biggest thing has been, of course, live streaming and VR. So what really brought your interest to those two areas? Uh, I worked in San Francisco as a in, in, in startup for many years, and I've always been an entrepreneur. And it, it's just been an interest to me. Like social has always been something that I, I I was good at, and uh, and sales has always been something I was good at, and 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 bringing people together was something I was always good at. So uh, with live streaming. I, I saw it as such a powerful tool, almost like a shotgun of social media, you know, so engaging, so amazing. And then VR came along, and I I realized that's a storytelling platform that is it hasn't been utilized before by common man. You know, like like people don't realize, even like our listeners don't realize that a pretty damn good VR uh, camera only costs around $350, uh, you know, and, and so the barrier of entry, as it got easier to, to break that barrier for creators, I started to realize how powerful VR was going to become once people were able to use all these hardware to make cool things. So, you know, I am, um, like a creator, I'm a poet, I'm a writer, I'm somebody who loves movies. And all these things that we talk about um, are just another way to to give somebody a voice, to help somebody to tell their story. And like live streaming right now is so, so very important. Uh, you know, when you're looking at Black Lives Matter, when you're looking at people that usually wouldn't have had a voice, that now they do. Um, 
I mean, that's something that that amazes me because it's so damn important, and it it it's now something that can't be taken away. Mm-hmm. It, it's 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 it, the sounds can can no longer be be muffled, um, mm-hmm. and and I I I I I think that that really shows that there's this tipping point in in live streaming, and pretty soon. Uh, VR is going to be pretty similar because people are going to people are referring to VR, virtual reality, as an empathy machine. If you're able to put yourself into the position of another person, then you're able to understand that more. Live streaming does that, but VR does that. I was just talking about a project with the police department about uh, showing a. Uh, showing the perception of what's going on when a, 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 an African American gets pulled over by the police, and showing that in the car with with a camera, as though he, you're going through that, and then it's narrated as the thoughts go through their head of what's happening. Oh, you know, and actually starting to figure out what the script was going to look like, the script of the narrator being like, okay, I'm reaching in the glove box to grab my reg- registration. Am I going to get shot? Yeah, you know, this, these things can be so impactful. And I realized with a lot of kind of pain on my part that my job in life now, my, my goal in life is to help other people uh, tell their stories. And sometimes that that keeps me from being able to, to to tell mine. But some people are meant to build stages, and some people are meant to be on them. I think I'm I think I'm more of a, a, a builder of stages than a person that's on stage. I think that's what 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 I was meant to be. That is absolutely amazing, Ryan. Um, that you speak about how live streaming has taken over. Um, this fast pace. It's really, really a fast pace because I remember when um, I got laid off my job in 2011, I didn't understand this technology world, as I will always say, because, I I mean, I'm computer literate, yes, Um, but to be able to make those type of connections online like you would offline, you can do it at a faster pace online. And um, so that is something that you're doing that a lot of people need to truly know that you need to do this if you want to be able to make those connections, if you really truly want to be able to grow your business, start your business, or or just be able to collaborate. In order for you to do that, you need to be able to show up. And that's something that was so hard for me to do because, again, I only knew, you know, just to be able to get on social media, but to make that connection like that and keep up, oh, my goodness, that's a challenge. (laughs) But once I learned it, I was like, wait a minute. This is possible. It's very much possible. I see how many, like with Dr. Finch, I met her through Periscope, through Periscope, you know, and to be able to meet her through Periscope and to us be doing so many amazing things together because I decided to show up and, and learn this new technology world. So it's very important to, as I always say, to be able to constantly keep educating yourself beyond um, your job, beyond that classroom. It's very, very important because look at the way these phones are changing. How, do we, how is it possible that we could be able to use our phone and to be able to connect with people all over the world? And use it as a business. That, that's right. crazy. It, <laughs> yeah, if you really think about it, like you know, I, I'm I'm older than you guys. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I, I remember the '90s. I remember the '90s. And uh, and if you look at your phone as what it is, your phone mm-hmm. represents millions of dollars of 1990 mm-hmm. technology. Mm-hmm. Millions yes. of dollars, and mm-hmm. it costs us you know, our phone bill and $750 or whatever the hell phones cost now without mm-hmm. all, all the hidden phone, hidden things. But yeah, I mean, one of the secrets that, that I tell people for, for businesses or for anything is you have to treat uh, your relationship with social, just like it's a real relationship with people. Mm-hmm. I watch my, my wife constantly because she uses social in, in a very, very good way. Like this just for fun. You know, us, the people that are doing social for, for business, 
mm-hmm. it, it's 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 kind of almost wrong. You know, it, it's it's utilizing social media for 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 business, which is right. But it's also we have to be looking at how people like like Lynette are using it. They use they only use the platforms that that are fun for them. They only use the platforms that their people are on. And um, my wife is probably better on Snapchat than than basically. 99% of the people that are on the damn platform. I've been written about in, in, in Inc. Magazine and, and in Forbes about, about me being on Snapchat, but that's, sh- sorry, that, that, that doesn't matter because like, I'm not even as good as my wife in, in reality of the skill of telling a story on Snapchat and being good on there, you know? And, and so my wife ended up meeting for the first time her best friend in the whole world that she has never met before in real life. She met her in real life night before last. And wow. he'd only known her through social. And like, they both considered each other best friends. And her, my wife's mother was like, like, what? You've never met this person before. And she's your best friend. And everybody in our generation and younger, you know, many younger siblings were like, well, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, like, and then um, Seth and Renee, they just got uh, engaged to be married. They're, they're in their early 20s. And they said, they said, we met on Snapchat. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, wow. They, Are you yeah, they, they met on, yeah, they met on Snapchat. And remember, it used to be really, um, this is, this is all stuff that's happened in the past 48 hours. Uh, you know, my, my life is, is very much surrounded by social media and studying it. But I, I really like the stories that come out of intense, like, true relationships that that really move the needle, that really tell a story, that that make something happen, that make a relationship last. Like, we're talking about business right now a little bit on – in the storytelling aspect. And I, I'm always asked by these big companies to make, to do what I call the big splash. And I hate the big splash. The big splash is when somebody wants you to bring a bunch of influencers to a show and do a lot of tweets and do a lot of periscopes and do a lot of Snapchats and all that stuff. And it. It, it, it's hard to do that in one day because you don't have a lead up to it. You you need to have time to, to get the story, you know, like any story has a, has a beginning, you know, has an intro and has a conclusion and it, you need to put these components at play to make the story interesting. You need to have something going on. You just can't do it and go blah content and then throw it all on the ground and then see what happens. I, you know, I totally agree. Content, totally agree. Content's nothing without strategy, and so, yeah, like, like I always say, I always tell people, like, I'm finally at at the point in in my career where I'm I'm like, I I don't want to do the big splash. This is how we're gonna do it, mm-hmm. and you've got to give me a few more days to make this happen. We've got to figure out hashtags. We've got to do something that reaches, that resonates, and that is relevant. You know. Like, like people don't think about relevance when when they think about social media. They just want numbers, and they don't think about story. They just, uh, yeah, it, like all this stuff goes together. Otherwise, it's mm-hmm. it's gonna fizzle. You don't want to mm-hmm. you don't want a firecracker. Sorry, we're we're very July Fourth right now. I'm in Plymouth, <laughs> Massachusetts. And that, you know, you don't want you don't want this this fat firecracker to go bam. This one thing, mm-hmm. you want this the symphony, the cacophony of sounds to happen mm-hmm. throughout that are timed out with this big finale that everybody gets excited about. Mm-hmm. And you have to plan when you're going to light those fuses. You know, Ryan, you are an interesting man because. What you're saying is, is my goodness, it, it reminds me. And and I never thought about it the way you just said it. I never really thought about it like that. Um, but it still has a connection. I remember when I was getting on Periscope and just, you know, giving little tips and tricks and letting people know who I am and, and how I started my journey. Um, I didn't realize that, you know, people are really listening. People want to hear your message. People want to hear your story because somebody is going through the same thing. Um, 
And then I remember, and I'm still trying to get used to this Facebook Live thing, and I just did that one recently where I did not really realize that so many people, it was like a slew of people that I didn't even know who the heck these people were. But because my message was so powerful, so many people can relate. And I and I speak about things that nobody don't, you know, they they, uh, they timid to be able to share their journey after a layoff, you know, and how you were able to bounce back from that. And somebody right now is, is um, you know, have lost their job or somebody who is experiencing, you know, nonsense on the job or somebody is not making enough money. They know they have more in them. And they just so afraid to be able to take their leap and share their message. And it's so important that we need to do that in this technology world. You know what I mean? So, ah, oh my goodness, share your message. That is so important. I totally agree with what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's important. You know, I, I think that's one of the things that, uh, it, you know, people are so tired of all the fake nonsense. And so uh, the reality Reality is so friggin' nice, and I, I we're, we're getting to this point where um, you're seeing Twitter just made a deal with uh, CBS and with Wimbledon and with the NFL. People want connection. We we've become so disconnected, and uh, you, you know social media hasn't been very social, and uh, and and I think that's I think that's changing because now the way that we interact with broadcasts, with television. I mean, I just put out a tweet that said, you know, remember must-see TV? Remember when it was called must-see TV? Because, I mean, like back in the day, we didn't have VCRs. When, when, when I Love Lucy came on, let's say it came on at Friday at 6 p.m., you had mm-hmm. to be on your ass sitting yep. there ready for I Love Lucy. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you missed it. And that's kind of the thing. Like, yeah, there's replay on Facebook Live. There's replay on Periscope. There's replay on Busker. There's replay on all this stuff. But the real value is being there. And uh, being there is, is, is so important, being a part of something. You know, I, I, I think a lot of people, before I, before I started this, I was in the most miserable job you could imagine. I was I was in a cubicle. I was in a tie that I could literally feel strangling my ever fattening neck from sitting in a damn cubicle. You know, like it was it was hell. I felt disconnected. I I, I felt and I didn't even realize that the social media posts that I was putting up were these fake things that made me seem like I was smart or happy or attractive or something like that. And I I felt dumb and I felt ugly and I felt disconnected, but that's not the way that I was conveying myself. And so I realized that your vulnerability is much more attractive because it's real. Like people are going to find you a lot more beautiful if they know that there's a different side to you that might be a little bit ugly. So I don't give two shits about what people know about me or what my, you know, when my life is hard or, or what, because who cares? That's me. I, I, I got, mm-hmm. I got a few beats left in my heart. I got a lot of breath left in my lungs. I don't have time for, for a bunch of bullshit, you know, like I've got to, I've got to do what I can to have an impact on this world. Cause I got two little girls. I got, I got a lovely wife that I want to keep happy. She's brilliant. She just got a, a, a job at UCLA. Uh, I mean, she, she's, you know, like in every way, shape and form, my better half. She's beautiful. She's brilliant. And she's funnier than me. I, I'm glad she never listens to any <laughs> interviews. Like she never listens to anything. She never watches me on Periscope. So it, it's funny because people are like, oh, you're kissing your wife's butt. It's not true because I know she's not going to listen to this. Like <laughs> she's just not. She, that, woman, that woman has never listened to a podcast in her life. And probably I will. 
Oh my gosh. She might surprise you one day. She just might surprise you one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I I, I seriously <laughs> doubt it. it. If she listens to if she listens to a podcast one day, it won't be one that I'm on. It, <laughs> it will not. Well, right. I I, you know, I commend you so much because you got out of that one um one way thinking of one way in and one way out of the cubicle. So that right there, so many people are strangled in that cubicle mindset, and you found a way to get out and find a way to be able to share your message. So thank you. Oh, you're yes, Ryan, you're welcome. Never. I mean. It was. I, I knew that it was going to kill me, and I knew that I was being uh, disingenuous, and I knew that it was going to be the thing that I did because I had a job where I was safe, and I had insurance, and I was able to take care of my my children. You know, I mean, I left. I left. You know, the enterprise when I had a, a very young girl and another little baby on the way. Um, and and that was a that was a, a big risk, but I also would not have done it if it wasn't for my two girls because I didn't want to raise my daughters and look into their eyes knowing that I was a fake. And so, um, you know, when I, when I made the decision, I talked to my wife and I was like, you know, the world needs to be a better place. And I need to be a part of doing that. And so everything that I do is centered around making the world a better place for females, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. and, and you'll, you'll see that in a lot of the things that I do. I, I want to give a voice to, to the people that need to have a voice. I, I want to, you know, spread love and get people together. And honestly, some of the stuff that I do is about making people accountable for their actions and to recognize the fact that they're, they're effing hurting p- people through through you know through being crummy people and not knowing it. It's kind of underhanded the way that I do that, but you know <laughs> it, it's it, it's kind of it's, it's kind of necessary to to point out the fact that the world can be cruel, but you don't have to be. I don't know. You know, Ron, I I know that about you because I remember the uh, scope where you called out a gentleman for being uh, for mistreating other people on Periscope and you had probably a thousand viewers on that and after that Periscope there was a lot of change because you spoke out and you know I truly admired you for that that's when I knew that I had to be part of your enterprise because anybody who will stand up for someone that maybe anybody may not know and make a change that fast, you know, kudos to you, Ryan, because a lot of people wouldn't have put their reputations on the line like that, but you did that. And that is one of the reasons why I, Mm. you know, you have my utmost respect always. I didn't Love know it. that. Thanks. Oh, I didn't didn't know that. Thanks, Akina. Yeah, I mean, we've we've been, you know, my family's been through some really hard times this year, just in transitioning, you know, uh, to 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 this insane life that we have. You know, I'm I'm in my late thirties, and I I do speaking engagements that, um, it's a, my, a lot of times I don't want to. You know, I, I grew up, I had a stuttering problem when I was little. Uh, I don't particularly like being on stage that much, but it, it's something that I need to do for for the brand that I created. When I first started the brand, I, I had somebody that I, I wanted to use as a, as a, a, you know, a mouthpiece, as a speaker for, for the brand, and uh, and that didn't work out because nobody knows how to tell your story. And so, you know, my own cowardice taught me that and made me realize that I had to get up and, 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 and say the things that I needed to say because nobody can passionately tell your story. Nobody can convincingly tell your story except for you. And so 
I really like to be able to be on podcasts like this one and, and talk about things like this because, you know, if we reach one or two people, um, change something about what they're doing or inspire to do one scope or one tweet or something that says something nice or apologize to somebody, then, then we've done something. You know, one of the biggest accounts that we've gotten for our business in the past year was off of a live stream that had eight viewers. Eight wow. Eight viewers. So, mm-hmm. so don't ever shut that shit down just because you think that, that you've only got eight viewers. Mm. You don't know when it's the CEO of a Fortune 500 company that's one of those eight viewers. And you don't mm-hmm. know if you have 300 people viewing your stream and all of them are a bunch of jerk offs, you know, <laughs> like, mm. it, it ain't about nothing. Like, like, you know, it's, you, you never know who is watching you at any given moment. So mm-hmm. I'm always, always, always realize that it might be somebody that's, that's really, really going to move your needle, you know? You know, Ryan, when you say that, that you never know who's watching, I remember somebody that we mutually know who had seen me and it just grew bigger and bigger. And people, when we did this thing every Wednesday, um, it got to the point where this person had called me out and blew me away because I never knew she was really listening to my message like that, and that's Dr. Akina Finch. And she wound up telling me that, Vanessa, you have a powerful message. Somebody's waiting on your message. You need to share that message. And ever since then, it was something in me I knew I already had, but it was that confirmation to them be able to say, you know what, Vanessa, you need to show up more now. And so now the more I show up, the more powerful um, I make connections, more powerful somebody sends me a message and say, you know what, you really truly inspired me, and I never knew they was watching. I never knew them. But because somebody was bold enough, unapologetic enough, and called me out in front of everybody, I was able to say, you know what, she's absolutely right. Don't hide behind what you truly know is yours because you are unique in your own right. And we all have our own uniqueness. So when you say that you never like to, you know, get on the podcast or have a speaking or what have you because you have a stuttering problem, but you are unique in your own right, and you was bold enough, unapologetic enough to be able to share your message, somebody heard your message and pick up the biggest sponsorship for your business because you said, you know what, I give no two cents about what you think, but I know I got a message. And that alone, I'll take my hands off to you. Yeah. I I mean, I, I... I put a proposal in front of somebody a few weeks ago uh, for an engagement that was going to last us, you know, it was a 90 day engagement. We usually do three months engagements for our clients. um, You know, when we're doing strategy for them, Brian Fanzo and I, I mean, Fanzo, Fanzo, when we talk strategy, I don't know if you guys know this, but Brian Fanzo worked at the Pentagon for like seven years in the strategy department. Brian Fanzo, like he's he's like legit. He worked in the Twitter data science team, and when I sent them that proposal, they're like, "All right, let's go ahead and sign the papers and everything." I said, "You don't need to talk about it," and they said, "Nope, I, I've been watching you for a year." I was like, "I was like, what?" They said, "I've been watching you for a year," and they they said, "Tell me your routing number for your bank," and I was like, "All right," and that was it. I didn't need to negotiate. I didn't need to, do, need to do anything because they knew from from following me for an entire year that my my brand is to give more than than people ask for. And and God Almighty, I tell you this, hand of God, like we work harder on that account. My team does. I mean, hell, I talked to her today. I'm, I'm on vacation in Boston with family. I talked to her today because I was having a hard day. This is one of, my, one of our best accounts and one of my closest friends now. Mm. You, know, How- you know, I mean, like, crazy. So, you know, that, that all comes from being very, very honest and very, very open about things because, I mean, the, the invisible CEO or the invisible founder – it just doesn't really happen anymore. I like to make, I like to empower people that are 
in companies. I think that's really cool when people say, hey, what, do we, what about we, we do an influencer program? Like, what about we do, you know, an influencer program in-house? And they're like, what? I'm like, I'm like anybody get a Snapchat? Anybody, want, anybody that you really like to have lead meetings that, that you might want to do a live stream with, with your handle? Ooh. Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we work about? Why don't we work that out? Because you know what happens if I if I can make somebody powerful inside of a business, that means two things. That means one, they get to handle their handles, their Twitter handles, their social media accounts, all in house, not even having to worry with NDAs. And two, employee advocacy is so much more powerful because these people are telling the story from inside the company. Like like that's real. You you have a you have a, a a a company man that has worked at Southwest Airlines for twenty seven years telling you about it. That's that's pretty damn cool. That's that's a cool story. What has changed in twenty seven years? Twenty seven years you mean those those planes twenty seven years ago had freaking ashtrays on the hand or you know <laughs> you know and all that stuff. Wait, I mean, you have a long ass time. That's true. So, wow. You know, that's that's, that's, that's that's what I, I I like I like doing. I like I like seeing different people, just like we all do. I, I like seeing people tell really cool stories, and mm-hmm. I, I I think that's kind of a the the thing that's going on in the world today. Wonderful, Ryan. You know, as we're getting ready to grow uh, to a close, I would love for you to tell the audience about what you have going on that we need to look for and, you know, some few closing uh, words about how you're making changes in social media. Okay. Um, Well, the big product that we work on is a big event called Summit Live, and it's the Twitter handle is at Summit underscore live. And uh, we have a big event coming up in L.A., and we have some other events that are happening um, around New York and and the U.K. And by the time this podcast comes out, maybe, maybe a little bit uh, after, um, we'll be announcing a lot of pretty, a lot of big changes um, with with a store that we're building out. And, um, you know, with really, really wanting to change the world in a bigger way with the mentality of being kind of a, 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 a central place for people to meet and a central place for, for people to get their, their information around live streaming. I, I really want people to be able to create the best content uh, that they possibly can, like you know, with your your podcast, you have a nice intro, and you are doing it with pretty decent guests. Probably everybody is going to be killing it um, a little better than my my old stuttering ass, you know. <laughs> but um, I, I think the main thought that I usually leave people with is is that. People want to hear your story, and we're in this place where you kind of need to play around and figure out where you need to tell it. You might not be somebody that's good on Snapchat. You might be somebody that's good on Periscope. You might not be somebody that's good on Instagram. You might be somebody that's really good on Facebook or or whatever, or you might be a blogger. You might think you're a podcaster but you might be a blogger or vice versa, but you never know until you try, you know, find stuff out, be involved with people that you meet online, you know, find out about them, see what they're up to, see, see what their goals are, see where they come from and then offer to help. You have no idea how easy it is to, to get next to good people. If you just Mm -hmm. say, Hey, I just want to help. I can't, did that, you know, Akina did that, and, and, like, I'd do anything for Akina. I I think that she's awesome because she came 
with with a servant's heart, you know, and I, that's how I've gotten everywhere. You know, I usually sign off my most of my emails with, you know, let me know how I can help, and then keep going, Ryan Bell. Let me know how I can help. And you know how many times, let me know I, I, how I can help turns into a client? You know how many times, let me know how I can help turns into something fun as hell you're going to do? Or let me know how I can help. You know how, how many times that turns into a friend? I mean, damn, dude. That's, let me know how I can help is probably one of the most powerful things you can say in the world. So I guess that's my thought. My, my, my rambling. I hope that whoever's listening to this on their treadmills or whatever or their walks have enjoyed my ramblings. That wasn't rambling. That was an amazing message. And, and the one thing that you kept on emphasizing on is that, you know, share your message. And that's what we all need to do because I tell people all the time, your mess is a message for someone else to be able to hear because you never know who is waiting for that message. So share it. It is you had to go through the things that you went through in order for you to be able to overcome the things that you've been through. You see what I'm saying? Share it. And don't oh, yeah. apologize. Don't apologize because your story would not be the same as my story. I can't assume it would not be the same as, as, as both of our stories. But somebody has a message, and somebody is waiting to hear that message. Somebody needs to be healed from your message. Somebody needs to get that confirmation like how um, Dr. Fetch got called me out. Somebody needs that. So, yeah. So yeah, I totally agree. So you didn't ramble. It was the truth. <laughs> it was the truth. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, keep sharing your message and keep making changes, and that's what it's about. Well, thanks, guys. Yes, it's been such a pleasure being on. Well, you know, you guys need anything from me. Sometimes it might take me a little bit of extra time to get to the emails because I get too many of them. Seems like I get a barrage every once in a while, but. Anytime you guys need some help, let me know. Um, it's been a pleasure being on your podcast tonight. And you can follow me at uh, at Ryan underscore A underscore Bell. I'm still like a big old Twitter fanboy. Um, and, and you know, have, have, have fun. Ping at me. You know, do whatever. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm usually pretty down to be involved in whatever whatever good's happening. So, do some good stuff, everybody. Yeah, I, I would definitely start following you now that I know who's Ryan Bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I'll follow and you then, back. Well, guys, and, you know, if, get... if Ryan has said something tonight that resonated with you, please find us on changingmindsonline.com. You can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Tuned In, and, of course, our YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Ryan, for being on the podcast. I appreciate you. It is always an honor to do any work with you, and thank you so, so much. Thanks, Akina. Thanks, Vanessa. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good night. You too. Thank you, Ryan. Good night. Good night.